is off. It is being recorded and we will upload to YouTube probably tomorrow afternoon. Um, please hold your questions until the end. This should take about a half hour to cover all the material. And if you think of a question and want to type it in the chat box, we will go to the chat box first before we get to when we're getting to our question and answer session. Those of you that do not know me, my name is Gabriel Fernandez. I'm the principal here at Gladstone. I do believe we have some employees here. Uh, Rena Gonzalez, our community liaison, is here. I think a few teachers are with us. Ms. Crawford, um, Ms. Roberts, and Ms. Dwarty Thompson are with us. I think I have a couple other classified people with us. I notice some student names here. Our ASB uh, president is here, um, and our student board member. A lot of different groups of folk, but um, here we are getting ready to come back. So first of all, I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience this year. It's been it's been a marathon and a half, I'd have to say, but here we are trying to make things different and see what we can do in the midst of spring break and getting ready for that last push for your students and you for the end of 2021. Our agenda is as follows, uh, similar to what we saw last night with uh, the district meeting, the goals for returning. Ms. Long, our instructional assistant principal, will describe the model as well as cohorts and the bell schedule. We'll cover what to bring to campus, what not to bring. A uh, brief overview of safety protocols. This presentation will be uploaded as a PDF so you can read what we're covering, but I'm not gonna read bullet point for bullet point. We're just gonna cover the major things that we all need to pay attention to. Uh, next, we're gonna cover campus entry and campus exit. Uh, moving around campus, we have to think about student movement differently in this environment. Our bathroom and disinfecting schedule. Uh, Decision-making protocol for what if we have a student or adult who might have symptoms. Uh, what to do about after school. If you have a need for an appointment with a counselor or a teacher or admin, and then lastly, if you've updated your contact information, and then after number 11, we will have a question and answer time to make sure we meet your needs. So first, kind of like Mr. Ortega and his cabinet mentioned last night, our goals for return here at Gladstone are to follow the LA County Department of Public Health guidelines, to maintain an inclusive, caring, and supportive environment, to establish a systematic protocol for health and safety, and then to consistently communicate with you all about things as they develop. So keywords here are following the guidelines and establishing systems. Those of you who work in complex organizations like school, know that to change from one thing to another requires a lot of measured movement and that's kind of what this year is all about is taking small steps towards returning after our collective experience with the pandemic and as we can all tell this has not been easy thinking about coming back right now because that's kind of a question that some of our students are wondering about and some of our parents are wondering about why in April, are we thinking about coming back? So here are a couple responses to kind of frame our moment right now. One, the case rates in LA County have fallen low enough to allow it. Two, physically the campus is ready in terms of the infrastructure in place to provide health and safety. Three, we need to start working towards a gradual transition back to in-person completely when we hopefully can get there next school year. Um, we also need time to provide uh, connection moments for in-person connecting, connection building for students and teachers. And then lastly, because we miss your kids. It's something that we've seen with our sports program. Um, seeing that adult in-person relationship with a student has changed the outlook for a couple kids already. And we'll speak more about that towards the end. Ms. Long, do you want to hear, speak a little bit about instruction? 
Hello, everybody. Good evening, and thanks for joining our meeting. So uh, the schedule that uh, we are going to shift to starting April 19th is uh, definitely different than what you and your students, your, your children are used to currently. What we're going to do is we are going to be posting the schedule weekly. Okay, and so everybody will be able to follow. So I'm going to explain how this is going to work. So starting week one, so week one is April 19th through the 23rd. And the reason why it says and week four is because it's revolving. So this is going to look exactly the same May 10th through 14th. Okay, so we still are going to have our block schedule. Zero period is going to be every day distance learning. So all everybody is going to be at home doing distance learning. They're going to log on to their zero period from 720 to 755. Then they're going to do period one. So this is where it's shifted a little bit. The times are different, 830 to 940. Then they have a short break. Then they'll do period three, 955 to 1105. Another short break and then period five. All of that is at home, at home, logging on like they currently do. Okay, the, the time blocks are a little bit shorter, but everything else is the same. Okay, Tuesday, it's going to look exactly the same as well, except it's period two, four, six. So if you notice, our current Monday of a minimum day is shifting to Wednesday. Okay. And then Thursday and Friday will be back to period one, three, five, two, four, six. Now the difference is, let's go back to Monday, after lunch, so from 12.30 to 1.30, this is in-person optional time. This is what we're calling TIMS. It stands for tutoring, intervention, mentoring, motivation, and support. And that is in-person, that is what IP means, okay? So that is from 1.30 to 2.40 in person. And week one and week four, if you notice, it's going to be period one on Monday, Tuesday, in person, tutoring, intervention, mentoring, motivation and support. And then period two will do the same thing. Okay, they will meet their teachers in period two during those time periods. Now, the students are going to be split into cohorts, cohort A and cohort B. And that is going to be according to your last name. So if you look on the side of the slide here, if your last name is Abrego through Lomeli, all of those students are going to be cohort A. So they're going to attend their first period intervention and support from 1.30 to 2.40 on Monday. If their last name is Lopez through Zuniga Tellus, then they're gonna attend their first period intervention and support on Tuesday. So Monday and Tuesday are period one, Thursday and Friday are period two, same cohort. If you're Abrego Gonzalez all the way through Lomeli, you will come on Thursday at 1.30 to meet your period two teacher. If you're Lopez through Zuniga, you will come on Friday, period two, at 1.30 to 2.40 to meet your period two teacher. Okay, then we will post the next week. Sorry, go ahead, next slide. Then the next week, we are gonna post for Week two, and you everything is the same, period one, three, five, two, four, six, except for after lunch. Take a look at cohort A. On Monday, you will meet your period three teacher, 1.30 to 2.40. And then cohort B, you will meet your period three teacher, 1.30 to 2.40. The cohorts will be the same. It's just the period that is shifting. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And then whatever happened, used to happen on Mondays, will shift on April 19th, will now happen on Wednesdays. It will always be our minimum days. That's all at home. 
and then you uh, you will be able to meet with them. teachers through Google Meets, phone calls, emails, and such. And at the afternoon time of Wednesday, they will have staff meetings and department meetings and such. So our Monday and Wednesday is shifting starting April 19th. Okay, this is gonna go all the way through. Next slide. Oh, where's week three and week six? Copied it wrong, but week three is oh, May. Week, week, okay, so wrong, wrong slide, it's okay. So, but uh, you will see week three and week six are gonna look the same, except after lunch, it's gonna be period five and six. Okay, again, each time the schedule shifts to a different cohort A, cohort B period, we will be posting on Instagram, on our Facebook, on our web page. The teachers will be posting in their Google Classrooms to keep things straight. And then period seven, where it says period seven IP, period seven that is normally banned. Um, we have a couple of periods that are period seven, but banned and uh, auto, those are going to be in person every day, 2.45 to 3.20. Okay. You want to talk a little bit about the schedule impact on our ECP program? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Okay. So if your student is in ECP, which is our connection with Citrus College, that will not change at all. Okay. Those, that schedule is remaining the same. So uh, they will still be meeting in ECP with their professors through this whole shift with the other periods. So things that you're going to need to bring to campus or class for in-person TIMS time. Teachers might require students to bring a charged Chromebook. We will have uh, power cords as, as necessary, but we're expecting that most of the Chromebooks will be charged. A filled water bottle with water, like you heard last night in the district meeting, we do have two water filling stations, ones in our cafeteria from last year, and they recently installed one in our library, but we're hoping that those water bottles are filled before because we're really trying to reduce movement on campus. Third bullet point is gonna be hard for our high school kids to understand. We're not gonna allow eating right now because of the risk it does to having the mass all down in class. I know that's gonna be a huge culture shift for students who are used to eating while they're learning. It's not gonna be allowed inside this school year. Uh, furthermore, our ASB student store and our vending machines will not be selling food on campus to discourage eating in class. I know that's a technical detail that students probably might not like, but it's for safety reasons to make sure that the students are keeping their masks on. If a textbook is required, please bring it same with a notebook. That's gonna be teacher's uh, request for what materials students will bring. Finally, Students will notice that lockers, meaning the ones that they've used in the past, are all caution taped. Lockers will not be used to drop materials off. We're just trying to discourage gathering and time away from classrooms. And then furthermore, locker rooms are still closed as of right now for students who might be in PE. They're not going to be dressing out. They will be outside doing physically distant activity, but there's going to not be burning up a sweat to be stinky before they go home. All right, critical to our success here at Gladstone and Azusa Unified are following some of the safety protocols that our Department of Public Health have established. I'm not gonna go through all of these word for word. You can take a look at the PDF that will be posted to the website and sent home this weekend. However, this is the critical one. Maintain distance six feet from others and try to avoid the grouping. When we think about high school students and what is the biggest challenge in terms of uh, post COVID uh, world that we're in is, or not post because we're not through it yet, but making sure that our students are keeping their distance from each other, which again, like I said last year when we were just starting this, this craziness, it was kids like to group together. They like to be in large groups. Luckily, sports have shown us that students are capable 
of maintaining their distance to prevent the spread of COVID. I've done a couple of the contact tracing protocols in my capacity. And the number one question that we ask is, how did you come within six feet of anybody? That is the most critical health and safety rule besides wear a mask is keep your distance. So those are the two rules that we really are gonna go over and over and over with our students and parents. Uh, hand hygiene, we do have uh, hand sanitizer that will be available in all classrooms for the purposes of uh, cleaning hands if necessary. We are going to have the disinfecting stations in our quads and as well as in our offices to promote hand hygiene. Our restrooms will be open for the purposes of students to go to the bathroom where they can wash their hands as well. Again, our bathrooms are going to have been reset up to only allow one student at a time. But given the fact that we are not at lunch on campus and given the fact that we are gonna have really small capacity in terms of students being on campus at once, we do not foresee crowded bathrooms. I know for our students who remember lines at the bathroom during lunch and lines at the bathroom right before they go to class, that's one thing that's on everyone's mind, but given the fact that we're cohorting students and given the fact that we're not eating lunch on campus, we expect that the crowding and bathrooms will not remain where students will get the chance to use the restroom and will get the chance to wash their hands in the bathroom if they feel it's necessary that they go and just to wash their hands. Um, again, the, the safety protocol about the masks is critical. We are just going through round two with a lot of our employees in the district to get the second round of vaccine, but we're still requiring all employees to wear masks. Just like our students who I think that we've heard all heard about the vaccine being available to 16 and up in April, it's not gonna be required. That's not required, but even after vaccine, we still expect everybody to be on campus with a mask on to make sure that we're not transmitting something. The science is still out in terms of transmission after vaccine. So we just want to be extra precautious and reduce the spread by making sure we have face coverings on. The district has provided us with a box of masks for every classroom. We have masks in storage. We have cloth masks. We have surgical masks. We have face shields for teachers. We have gowns for when students might be really sick. We have quite a bit of personal protective equipment here on site to make sure that the conditions are safe for students and faculty and staff. Critical also to our success with state health and safety here is the work that you do with your children at home. So uh, this is also available in our guidebook that the district office shared last night. Uh, please screen your students at home, which is if they do have COVID-like symptoms of maybe a fever, a new cough, uh, chest pain, uh, decrease in smell or taste, please keep your student at home. You don't necessarily contact the school saying, I'm keeping my child at home for Tim's, but communicate and don't send them to school with the temperature. That fever uh, is also, or the temperature of students is also going to be checked. When they come to school, we are going to verbally check students for their symptoms as they're waiting to be temperature scanned by our main scanners. So not only are we gonna rely on you to kind of do your part at home, but we are also going to screen students and staff when they're arriving at the campus to make sure that we do not have symptomatic individuals on campus. Uh, furthermore, there's their guidance from LA County and the state of California regarding travel. If you are planning on traveling out of state, like some of us might be going to see family in another state or in another country during spring break, which is completely normal. We, uh, the county is guiding guidance states that we need to quarantine for 10 days. So that's something that you might want to consider as you're planning travel for the future. Just know that that travel advisory is in effect in California and in LA County because different states have different rates of transmission with coronavirus right now. Our campus entry is uh, structured differently from what we all remember in the past, but again, this goes to our ability to monitor students coming on. We have two student entrances that will be available to students, and here's how we break them down. Students who walk to school or drive their own car to school will enter our campus from the gate 
area near the bike racks near C4, the way our student athletes currently come on, they're going to walk past the bike rack. They're going to have their symptoms uh, checked verbally by a staff member. They're going to walk through C4, be scanned, and then enter on the campus that way. Or if your student is going to be dropped off for Tim's time on Circle Drive, they are going to go through the main office, have their not through the main office internally, they're gonna go through the gate at the main office up the ramp. They're gonna be asked questions verbally. They're gonna be temperature scanned by the attendance office and then they're free to enter campus if they satisfy the screening. Campus exit, students will exit near, if they're in B quad, they're gonna exit the campus at the circle drive gate that gate is an exit only. In the past, students entered the campus through that gate. Not anymore. It's an exit only gate. And then the C quad gate there by the parent center will be the exit for students in the C quad. Notice if a student who is in here realizes that we have gates, we are going to lock certain gates to encourage proper movement through campus at the end of Tim's time. Furthermore, if a student is in music class or in the D, quad, D section for music or, not, or art or other classes in the D area, they're gonna be exiting that gate that leads towards the gymnasium. Those are designated exit only for students. And we will have campus security out and administration making sure that students are not gathering under the trees or on the grass. You have to make sure that they're exiting in a timely manner. We have set up to the best of our students will see signage that just des describes how they're to move. Each of the main gates for the quad has been designated as an entry or exit area. We've painted uh, with athletic paint arrows all over the place to help students see the way proper movement should look. We're gonna have extra signage everywhere saying enter only, exit only. Those of you who've gone to a supermarket have seen how this principle plays out where one entrance is designated to come into the store, the other entrance is designated to exit the store. We're following that similar line of thinking in terms of encouraging orderly student movement. <laughs> And again, the whole point of it is to really help us all understand we have to kind of move about campus in an orderly fashion to reduce the instances of transmitting the disease. Briefly discussing uh, the bathroom and disinfecting schedule, our bathrooms will be cleaned regularly during the day, uh, increased frequency of cleaning. Our classrooms will be cleaned deeply every night in the afternoon shift after students have exited the campus for Tim's time. During the day, our custodial staff will be cleaning before students arrive uh, to make sure the rooms are ready. The high touch surfaces like doorknobs and uh, desks are gonna be wiped down deeply throughout the day. And then the major cleaning occurs on Wednesdays. And that's why we have that um, Wednesday, no one's coming to school day so the, so the custodial team can do a deep clean during the week. Also, as part of our disinfecting and cleaning schedule, uh, the district office talked about HVAC uh, upgrades. We have seen the HVAC upgrades occurring here at Gladstone this week in anticipation of students to return on April 19th. Most of the air conditioning units are working. They have upgraded the filters. They have this thing called an ionizer, which is supposed to enhance the quality of airflow or whatever it's supposed to be in the room. As we get reports that some conditioners might need more uh, maintenance, we are putting those work orders in to make sure that we are ready for the 19th. The decision-making protocol, because no matter what we do, somebody still might pop up sick in a classroom. So the district has a protocol called the decision-making protocol that comes from the County Department of Public Health that says, follow this, these guidelines if. So if a student were to de demonstrate uh, symptoms that a teacher were concerned about, they would notify the office. We would send our health aide 
who is going to have afternoon hours. The student would be made to wait outside, and that health aide is extra trained, not a full medical nurse, but has been trained on additional protocols to assess whether or not that person is quote unquote regular sick or somebody that we need to isolate. So if it's a student who needs to be isolated, we have an observation room, again, where they're not gonna be in contact with any other normally sick student, where they will be phone call to the home of the parent to say, hey, we have the student, they might have a fever, they might be demonstrating respiratory-like symptoms, please come and get them. Those students will not be moving about campus, they will be held in a, in a private area, we're not drawing a lot of attention to them. And then through the protocol, we will notify if necessary, if it's a true case. The thing that we've learned from our experience here, for the most part, we've not had it. We've had students on campus since November. Even in the middle of that surge with uh, COVID in January, February, we did have our in-person think together cohorts. We did not have to use this decision-making protocol once with students. So that is a good thing because of all the screening that we do beforehand. After school expectations, because some of our students are involved in after school programs, um, including sports, if returning to campus underlined. So right now, even though our Think Together program is considered an after school program, they're not gonna have after school clubs available at this time. Think Together will still operate its in-person cohorts in the morning to support parents in distance learning from 8 to 2.30. I spoke with the district office this afternoon to see, okay, what about students in Think Together in person in the morning? May they attend in person with their actual classroom teacher? The answer is yes. The guidance from LA County does talk about the ability of groups of students to go to one small group after that's permitted under the guidelines. Students participating in our swim team, and we have a few, their practice starts a little bit later, so they're gonna have to go home to change into their swim gear before swim practice. And then finally, uh, football will be over before in-person starts, but for our other sports programs, we're asking that they come in their practice gear already because our locker rooms are not available for changing or the restrooms will not be open for changing. So that's something, if you have a child in basketball or track and field and they're, or soccer and they're looking to participate, still after the in-person Tim segment, please send them in uh, their practice gear. Now, if you're keeping your child home, no need to worry about that, but if they were to come to school, make sure they're in practice gear. Appointments at this time, we're still preferring virtual appointments. There are instances, however, where an administrator or a counselor even might request an in-person appointment that will come from the school, or you might request an in-person appointment, appointment, but let's try to keep that to the highest level of need. Our IEPs currently are scheduled to remain uh, virtual as of right now. And then, like I said, the school will make contact for in-person appointments as necessary. We do have students going to the library to get books. We do have parents seeking to change out Chromebooks and those services are still gonna be available in person. Final element from here before we do question and answer. Um, if your phone number has changed, please contact Joanne Gomez to give us new contact information. At that point, lastly, I think I mentioned it, no food will be served. I know at the elementary level, they're talking about a grab-and-go lunch. We are not doing a grab-and-go lunch system here. They're coming to school after lunch, so which means there's no lunch service here, except for Think Together students who might be in the in-person Think Together, but the district still is doing the weekly food distributions at these three sites. This is the high school. Murray Elementary School and Slauson Middle School. All right, so that's where our food distribution is still occurring weekly at the district level. At this time, I am open for your questions.
Mary. Hi, good afternoon. I have a, I'm a bit confused with the schedule. Would you mind going over it again? For instance, my child would be going into a cohort A. Okay. So the student, what, what grade level is the student in? 10th. Okay. So right now, as the schedule is developed, the student, your student would remain in distance learning in the morning with their current teachers. So no teacher changes are occurring in this model. So period zero, if your child was enrolled in a zero period occurs from 720 to 755, distance learning. Period one, distance learning, 830 to 940. So you'll notice that that's changed a little bit from current schedule that they're experiencing right now and will be experiencing April 12th through the 16th. Then there's a 15 minute passing period to get up, go to the bathroom, do what they gotta do at home. Then period three, 9.55 to 11.05 distance learning. Then another short passing period, period five distance learning, 11.20 to 12.30. Then there's a lunch of an hour. During that time, that's travel to school time towards the end, just as well as our, some of our staff who will be traveling to the school to do their in-person Tim's time from 1.30 to 2.40. So students who elect, because again, coming to school in this model is still optional. Students who choose to come for the in-person support where teachers are going to be building those relationships, a little bit of extra support. It's not new instruction that is occurring in the afternoon. It really is, hey, you've been struggling. Let me work with me. Or, hey, I, I see that you're kind of down. Let's talk. Let's say, think of it also like teachers really treating that human aspect. It is not going to be hopefully computer-based where teachers are doing that human connections because we know from this experience over the last couple of months, that's the tough part is that human connection that kids need. That human connection time, that Tim's time is 1.30 to 2.40. Then seventh period, if the student is in band or if the student is in auto, they have a 2.45 through 3.20 timeline. Last night, uh, I think some parents were asking, well, what if they have in-person, then they go to seventh, what's the cleaning gonna look like? Because we only have two classes and our marching band is most likely gonna be working outdoors. We have one spot to worry about, which is our auto class. And that's very easy to take care of in terms of making sure it's been disinfected before the next group of kids comes in. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does, thank you. You're welcome. And like Ms. Long stated, we are going to post every week the schedule so the parents know what's going on. Any other questions? Just to kind of clarify on the afternoon piece, if I would highly recommend you take a look at Aries and look at what your child is missing, any missing work, any kind of quizzes or tests or labs or uh, anything like that and then I would say to your child you're missing a quiz two quizzes in period one you need to show up on Mondays um, in order to do that so it's a really good time for them to catch up and get what they miss or get clarifications from their teachers uh, on the lesson of the day but like Mr. Fernandez said it's not a new lesson this is to help support them um, with what they currently were working on during their distance learning at home online. Crystal raised her hand. Crystal? Hi, no, this is Crystal's mother, Saban Flamino. Oh, sorry. I, I signed on to her account. That's okay. So yep. I kind of ask you something. So there's been all this hype about coming back to school. Yahoo, everybody's all excited, yep. blah, blah, blah. And then we come to this last night and now again today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now I, my, my kids are, you know, I can't speak for Crystal, but I know it's like, you know, kind of set them back a little bit. They're like a little bummed out. Yes. You know, I have, you know, if you don't need the Tims and whatnot. So I just feel like, how is this going back to school though? You follow what I'm saying? I, I feel I like I'm, I feel really let yeah, down right now. I'm like really disappointed, you know, but at Tims, I, I mean, it's like, this is, I feel it's not fair because these kids have been so anticipating. They're so excited and bam. Yeah, I know. It's it's like, you know, I'm putting some of these kids into a downward, I mean, really depressed right now. You know, I'm like, you know, I feel let down. I yeah. mean, this is the way it's going to be the I rest think, of the you know. I, I would say, though, uh, I'm basing my answer based on what I've seen with the, the sports program. 
that hour and a half or hour with an adult and with their peers does make a difference for them. We did have a meeting earlier this week where um, our cheer coach was describing to the small group of people I've been talking about getting, about getting ready for next year that that first week back, they were barely talking. It was little bit by little bit like they've been uh -huh. through. And then over the last, she said it took about eight weeks. And again, it's only been about an hour to an hour and a half after school doing right. something with their peers. Now they're starting to feel like they're normal. So okay. it's a long process. So I hear you saying, you know, this is not what we thought coming back would be like. But in reality, mm -hmm. it's we're still in the process of navigating all the factors here. And one okay. of the main factors that goes into the making of this model, the way I look at it is a lot of, of the students in elementary school right. elected, I have to stay, elected to stay home. And a lot of the students here and at Azusa High School are the unfortunate primary caregivers during the day. So I think part of the model is based on the fact that a lot of our students are taking care of somebody else during the day. Right, right. I, I understand that completely. Yeah. And we're also really, really worried and just being as much as this makes sense is that right now, if you're paying attention to what's going on with the with coronavirus is that right. they're noticing an increase in cases at 16 to 29. Okay. So we yeah, really, <laughs> yeah, we're really trying to make sure that we don't have another surge in California. Okay, so, so it is. The, it is the younger age. Like, okay, I would just, you know, yeah. I'm just. I'm not I'm saying they're like, they're getting like, sick wow. and dying. Yeah, it's not that I want to get rid of my kids, you know, but you know. <laughs> this is okay, a slow I just had a, return. I just return. All right, Baby all right. Steps. I all know right, it's right. not. It's not what we want, but. Reality is, I was just looking today online to see what other districts are doing. A lot of the districts in our area, I think a couple, some are going like it seems like they're there the whole day, but then they're stuck in front of a computer all day doing distance learning in school. All right. Yeah, so, my granddaughter's in Glendora and she goes back full time on the 12th. You know, she goes right. back every day. And so I just had you know, concern because yep. I know some of the districts, other districts are going back. And I feel like we're like the only ones that, you know, we're like, yeah. I, I'm like what is this? OK, yeah. thank you. Thank you, yep, Mr. Fernandez. You're welcome. Other questions? Take a look at the chat box. I have a quick question. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, you said, stated about the each week is going to change the periods. So, yeah, my, so my son is in cohort um, B. Okay. And... um. Week one, it will be um, Tuesday's period one, and then on Friday will be, will be period, period two, and then two. And then week two will be period three and period four, and week three will be period five and period six. Week four will be period one and two again. Week five will be periods three and four. Week six, six will be periods five and six. And then we have two more weeks that are still being worked out with the teachers about how those last couple, two, eight, nine days of school are going to look because that's what those are. That's the Memorial Day weekend and then the graduation week that they're lining up towards the end. But okay, their, so every week their actual changing. class schedule will not change. Their teachers will not change. Some of the parents have been wondering, will this affect my student in virtual academy? No, it won't. Um, some students, some parents are wondering, well, if I choose not to send my kids, what's going to happen to them in the afternoon? That's just further work time. They're not going to be missing direct instruction from 1.30 to 2.40. They'll be missing, hey, this is your chance to interact with the teacher in person and get to meet that person as a human being because that's, again, part of school that we've been missing the last couple of months. But again, we're going about it slowly because this is a whole different change from what we were used to when we were normal before the virus showed up. Okay, so uh, in the in the cohort in the Tim's, I'll be changing um, periods different every every week. Yes, and we are going. Okay. Uh, as I'm sending out my my communication every Sunday night, the new uh, schedule will come out. We will post it to Facebook. We will post it to oh, the so website, much. and we will post it to Instagram for the kids to see every Sunday night. They'll see the thing. Also, we but are isn't working out mandatory, right? It's not mandatory. Correct. We okay. do um, looking at surrounding areas because of the different models that we're noticing between 15 to 25% of the students are electing to come back. And that's to be expected because parents and kids are looking at the model going, you know, it might as well just stay online. 
learn it this year and then we can get back to normal next year as normal as what normal will yeah. look like okay. yeah because it says it's special ed and, and changes is he's difficult with that i understand that's that's tough okay all right thank you so much you're welcome i have a quick question yes ma'am um for the kids that are going to stay home in case they need to make up a test or need extra tutoring are mm -hmm. they allowed to go back to school to do that so are, is that a student that's enrolled in virtual academy or a student that's distance learning? Distance learning. Okay, distance learning, yes. They, they can come back and work with their teacher for the, again, that Tim's time. The first T is tutoring. So if the teacher says, hey, I really need to work with you on this, that's what the, the, the point of that is, is for them to come back, get that extra help. And do they have to come every time for Tim's or just when they need it? It's just when they need it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Other questions? If you think of other questions that you, um, maybe after this you talk to your spouse or you talk to your child, you, know, you come up with a new question, go ahead and email me here. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Fernandez, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, no I see in Elaine Vicente with their hand raised and a Maria oh. Orozco with their hand raised as well. I think I, I spoke to both of them already. Am I right, Maria and Elaine? Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Um, go ahead and email me questions. This meeting is going to be repeated tomorrow. Similar content, <clears throat> maybe different questions. Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be having this meeting with students specifically on April 12th to explain it to them. And then the April 13th through 16th during my lunchtime, if you come up with new questions over spring break and you just want to drop in and ask another question with me, I'll have an open meet for an hour. That will be in English and Spanish. It will not be a formal presentation. Just to answer your questions that you might have before sending kids back. Other thoughts or comments or questions? Last part I want to mention, which is part about the school, uh, summer school, we're exploring in-person options as well as online options, and that will feel more like normal school, we hope. Those uh, offerings are going to be coming out soon, late, latter half of April, regarding summer school for in-person for students that need it. That's coming. So this cohort thing is, is a start, but it's not the end, and we will get closer to normal next fall with the good news about the vaccine opening up to our different age groups. All right. Any final questions? If not, this meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your patience. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Be safe.